In this video, we're going to talk about complex numbers. So complex numbers. We're mostly concerned with adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing complex numbers. Um, but let's talk a little bit about what a complex number is. So first, there's something called the imaginary unit. So imaginary unit. So the imaginary unit is i, that's the, the symbol we use, i for imaginary, and it's equal to the square root of negative 1. Okay, square root of negative 1. And so where does this come from? So well, let's talk quickly about that. So aside, where does this come from? Well, a long time ago, people were trying to solve uh, this equation. So x squared plus 1 equals 0. So they said, okay, how do we do it? Well, they subtracted 1 from both sides. So they got x squared equals negative 1. And they took the square root of both sides, and so they got x equals plus or minus square root of negative 1. So they said, well, you can't take the square root of a negative number. It doesn't make any sense. So you know what they did? They, they made it up. They made up an answer. So they called it i. So this is totally made up, right? Someone just decided one day, hey, this is uh, something we need in order to solve the equation x squared plus 1 equals 0. So they made up this solution to this equation. And then like hundreds of years later, uh, other smart people, like engineers, came up with the use for this. So complex numbers are used a lot in physics and engineering. OK, so i is the square root of negative 1. And so what's a complex number? So a complex number is a number that can be written as a plus bi. OK, that's, uh, that's a complex number. So a here is called the real part. Okay, and B is called the imaginary part. So imaginary part. Okay, just extra extra math knowledge. So for example, let's say we had um, 2 plus 3i. So in this case, 2 is the real part of the complex number. And um, 3 is the uh, imaginary part. Imaginary part. Imaginary part. Uh, more examples of complex numbers. Uh, 3 minus 2i, that's a complex number. Uh, 7i is a complex number because you can write it as 0 plus 7i. So in this case, a is 0, and then b is 7. So the real part is 0, the imaginary part is 7. The number 4 is a complex number, believe it or not, because you can write it as 4 plus 0i. So the number 7 is also a complex number, because it's 7 plus 0i. So every single real number is actually a complex number. So recap, i equals the square root of negative 1. That's called the imaginary unit. A complex number can be written as a plus bi. Something important comes from all of this. If you square this, you get i squared equals negative 1. Because when you square the square root, it goes away. All right, we're finally ready to do our first examples. So let's do some simple examples of adding and multiplying complex numbers. So example. So I'll just say simplify. Oftentimes the questions will say compute or something along those lines. So a, let's see, parentheses 2 plus 4i minus i times 2 plus 7i solution. So something like this, we want to start first by um, distributing. So there is an invisible 1 here, so we can drop these parentheses or distribute the 1. So we just get 2 plus 4i. Here there's a negative i, so we have to distribute this. So negative i times 2 is negative 2i, and then negative i times 7i is negative 7i squared. So then we have 2, 4i minus 2i is 2i. Here we have the minus 7, and then i squared is negative 1. And then we can just rewrite this as 2 plus 2i. Negative and negative is positive, so we get plus 7. We can combine the 2 and the 7, so we get 9 plus 2i. 
do another one, b. What if we had um, 3 minus i plus 2 times 4 minus i? So again, in this case, we have a 1 here. And so we can distribute the 1 or simply drop the parentheses. So we have 3 minus i plus, and then we can distribute the 2 here. 2 times 4 is 8, and 2 times negative i is negative 2i. Then when you get here, you just combine like terms, basically. That's really what you're doing, because you have a 3 and an 8, so that gives you 11, and you have a negative i and negative 2i, so it's negative 3i. It's kind of like you treat the i almost like a variable, right? Even though it's not a variable, right? It's equal to the square root of negative 1. We kind of handle it the same way, right? You just combine the like terms, right? Here, even here, here we put together the i's, right? 4i minus 2i is 2i. Really easy stuff. You just have to watch out for this because i squared uh, is equal to negative 1. Before we do our next example, there's an important property uh, that's very useful in the problems that follow. So let b be a positive number. And it turns out that the square root of negative b is equal to i square root b, always. And this is super important. So whenever you have a negative in the square root, you want to get rid of the negative and put an i there. Let's look at some examples. So simplify. So if you had, say, square root negative 5, that would simply turn into i square root 5. Say you had square root negative 9. Well, that's i square root 9, but the square root of 9 is 3, so you get i times 3. So typically what people do is when they see this, they go straight to this, 3i, right? So the square root of 9 is 3, and you're going to get an i. So for example, the square root of negative 100, that would just be 10i. And that's because the square root of 100 is 10. Or one more, square root of negative 16, that would simply be um, 4i. Okay. Sometimes um, you have to divide complex numbers. So before we talk about division, division, we have to talk about something called conjugate. So the conjugate, the conjugate of a plus bi is a minus bi, okay? So for example, if you had 3 minus 2i, the conjugate would just be 3 plus 2i. If you had 4 plus 6i, the conjugate would be 4 minus 6i. If you had 7i, the conjugate would be negative 7i. And just for fun, say you had 4. Well, 4 is equal to 4 plus 0i. So the conjugate of 4 would just be 4 minus 0i, which is just 4. So the conjugate of any real number is the real number, just extra cool stuff, you know. So um, one more, one more. If you had i, the conjugate would be negative i. All right, so keeping that in mind, whenever we have a complex number, and we multiply it by its conjugate, something amazing happens. So if we have a plus bi times a minus bi, well, it turns out this is equal to a squared plus b squared. So this formula is extremely important and worth memorizing. So why is this formula true? So I'll go through it quickly. So if you FOIL or distribute, a times a is a squared. a times negative bi is negative abi. And then this one times this one is plus abi. And then this one times this one is minus b squared i squared. So these cancel, boom. So you get a squared minus b squared. i squared is negative 1. So negative and negative is positive. So all of the i's magically go away. So very, very useful formula. Let's do some examples uh, practicing using this formula. So simplify. Let's try 2 plus 3i 
times 2 minus 3i. So in this case, this is your a, and this is your b. So this is just going to be 2 squared plus 3 squared, right? Because the formula is a plus bi, a minus bi equals a squared plus b squared. So you just square the 2 and square the 3, so you would get 4 plus 9, which is 13. Say so you had 1 minus 2i, 1 plus 2i. You might say, oh, which one's the b? Is it the negative? No, it's always the positive. So here a is 1 and b is 2. So it would be 1 squared plus 2 squared. So that would just be 1 plus 4, which is equal to 5. One more. Say we had um, 6 minus i times 6 plus i. In this case, a is 6, and there's a 1 here, and there's a 1 here. So b is actually equal to 1. So this is 6 squared plus 1 squared. This will be 36 plus 1, so 37. So whenever you have a complex number times its conjugate, you square the real part, square the imaginary part, and add them up. So you just square the numbers and add them up. Now we can finally do the last example, which will be a division problem. So simplify. So let's do 2 over 3 plus i. So whenever you have a division problem, the first thing you do is you multiply by the conjugate. So 3 minus i, and then you divide by the same thing, 3 minus i. Okay. Keep in mind, these are all in parentheses. Okay. So if you had, say, 4 over 7 plus 2i, you would multiply by 7 minus 2i over 7 minus 2i. Same thing. Now we're going to distribute in the numerator. So 2 times 3 is 6. And then 2 times negative i is negative 2i. And here's the key. In the denominator, we're going to use our super formula. So this is a plus bi, a minus bi. So a is 3 here, so 3 squared. And b is 1, so 1 squared. Okay. So that's equal to 6 minus 2i over 9 plus 1. So that's 6 minus 2i over 10. And you can break this up. This is 6 over 10 minus 2i over 10. Right? That's how you can break it up. It's, it's this over 10, then minus, and then 2i over 10. And finally, we can simplify. Uh, 6 over 10 is 3 fifths, minus, and then 2 over 10 is 1 fifth, so i over 5. And that would be the final answer. So that was just a really quick video on complex numbers. Uh, to recap, i is the square root of negative 1. It's called the imaginary unit. A complex number can be written as a plus bi. a is called the real part. b is called the imaginary part. Whenever you have a negative number inside a square root, always turn it into an i every single time. And when you multiply a complex number by its conjugate, so like 2 plus 5i, 2 minus 5i, all you do is you square the a, so 2 squared, and you square the 5, so 5 squared. And whenever you're dividing, you always multiply by the conjugate and proceed as follows. That was a lot of information. Um, I hope that made sense.